the Mets did something that they very rarely do, and they did it with a team with no expectations. In years past, the Mets had the expectations. They should have won the division in 2022. I thought the NL East was over. Turned out it wasn't. But anyway, they should have won that division, and they, on paper, could match that Braves team. Last year, going into the season, we had high expectations for the Mets, and they didn't live up to them. But no matter what, even when they were better on paper, they go into Atlanta, and they get beat by the Braves. This year, no expectations. As a matter of fact, we're expecting the Mets maybe the season to end in the first time they see Atlanta coming off that 0-5 start. Uh-oh, and the Braves are looming. What's going to happen? And they win two out of three. And even with the loss, you're right, J.J., they showed some fight. So they not only win two out of three against Atlanta, a team that they never beat in that building, but they do it coming back down 4 nothing. The game that they lost, they came back from down 6 nothing to lose 6-5, and then they clobbered the Braves this afternoon. That is a tremendous series win early on. Now, Brett Beatty, a big part of that, he looks like a different player so far this year, J.J. 1,000%. And that, to me, is my big takeaway from what I've seen over the last few games is this confidence and swagger that you've seen from Brett Beatty. A lot more emotion. Obviously, he's been far more productive offensively. I know one for five is not a great day, but he gets the RBI to get you going. But the defense, th this guy looked like an absolute stiff and butchered defensively a year ago. A guy we were talking about as a potential DH. I wondered if he could play the position. And he has done a really nice job in shutting me up specifically with the way he's been able to go and play third base. I think that's a great sign for the Mets. Now, Sal, Keith brought this up in the broadcast, and I agree wholeheartedly. I want to see how Brett Beatty is going to handle a slump. Yep. I want to see how he's going to handle some more adversity and is he going to respond. Last year, he did not. He's talked about that a ton. But if you're a Mets fan, you had a lot of questions about, hey, the young players on this team, how could they emerge? How could they be better than what they were a year ago? You're getting great answers so far from Beatty. Yeah, I just love the fact that he looks like he belongs now. You feel it. Where in the past I look at him and I see somebody who's unsure if they should be a big leaguer or not. Now he's feeling himself as a big leaguer. That is a great thing. Emmanuel Jeff McNeil had a couple of hits, was on base four times. Could this be the breakout game that gets McNeil going? I think so, and you got to hope so for the rest of the season standpoint because Jeff McNeil – you have some givens on this Mets team that I'm not too worried about right now. Just early season struggles, but the givens are going to play out for the rest of the season. I'm not worried about Alonzo. I'm not worried about Lindor. I'm not worried about Nimmo. But Jeff McNeil, Starling Marte, those guys who you needed more from this season. McNeil's one of those guys that if you're going to get back to not 2022, what you did that year, but close to it. You can't have a zero in production from Jeff McNeil. And those were two timely hits today, by the way. Third inning, right. you're piling on, you're extending the lead. RBI single there, big spot. Seventh inning, three runs against Quintana. You got to close out that game. Two out. That's a McNeil hit. That's a timely hit. He needs to get back to that. So the Mets need to hope this is a McNeil they see the rest of the way. Yeah, it was a tremendous day, tremendous series for the Mets, and maybe it can get these guys going now moving forward.